It started with a square. Oh, that should be my intro. It started with a square. <laughs> Hey tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and I'm 28 from the United Kingdom. This channel of mine is a bubble filled with creativity and empowerment. It's documenting my journey as a crochet designer, making moments and memories. So if you're brand new, hi, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us all here. And if you're returning, hey tribe, welcome back. It's so good to see you all. I hope the last few months have treated you well. I haven't really posted since, um, well, I've posted twice this year and we're now in March. So you've been getting an update monthly in effect. So I just hope that January and February have treated you really, really well and that you've had lots of time to make lots of different things. And thank you so much for sticking with me and coming back today. Today's little vlog is all about a design I'm working on, which is sat in here. And at the moment I've dubbed it reflection because whilst working on it, I've reflected a lot because I like to do the deep and meaningful, y'all. So, where to start? I've got some little notes. Let me show you what I've been working on. Okay. It started with a square. Oh, that should be my intro. It started with a square. <laughs> it started with a square. This square, to be honest. To be, to be, not to be honest, to be, I don't know what the word is I want. It started with this square, which I absolutely adore. Um, I made a granny square, a three, sorry, a four round granny square out of my favourite colours at the moment, which are pinks and greys. She says sat in all black with purple hair, but anyway, pink's my thing. Um, I stash dived to make this square and I quickly made it because I had a design in my mind of what I wanted a jumper to look like. So I swatched this, I used a 5mm hook, I haven't sewn the ends in, it adds to the charm. And from there my design came about and I've included it in this journal of mine. Oh, I want to just show you this page. Do more with less. Simplify, simplify. Okay, so. I've drawn it out, I promise you. It's in here. Here we go. This little design of mine, here. So I was really seeing a granny square jumper with a cut out back detailing, ribbon to join and sleeves. Um, and so there is the picture of the back. You can see that little square there, that's me showing or depicting that the entire thing was gonna be made out of granny squares. Now, 
What's quite funny about this design, I just want you to note for now, is when I originally drew it and I sketched in pencil, can you see the hemline there was a lot longer and then I cropped it. Just remind, just remember that because I'm going to come back to that point very, very soon. So I made this square and knew that I wanted to make that um, and I was working on Rito, my Rito yarn jumper, Pinnacle. Um, if you haven't seen that, go check out that vlog because it's amazing. Um, and the pattern will be dropping soon. Anyways, I digress. I made this to keep myself focused. Um, so I swatched, I did my little doodle, I wrote out some things, I made a bit of a plan and I put this in my journal and I was walking around with it for a couple of weeks actually and it really helped me to just crack on with what I was working on with Pinnacle because I knew what I wanted to move on to next so that was that was really good in keeping myself motivated. Um, the yarns used, I split, um, split. I selected some yarns to use. Um, I swatched with just colours that spoke to me, but for the actual jumper, I was seeing like an Easter type colour palette. In actual fact, I am working towards wearing this on Easter Sunday, so that fits in really, really nicely. So, the colour palette that I went with, I can show you in this huge, giant bowl of yarn ends I've got here look at all those um i posted about this jumper on instagram i put in a little snapshot of me holding part of it up and i called it um barbie goes to easter lunch because it's heavily pink with then the pops of turquoise yellow orange glitter pinks um greens there's glitter white there's so many different colors in there and that is my arm ends so far mm -hmm. might just weigh that um so what i did is i selected some yarns and they're in this giant bag down here it's just a, a h tote bag that i got for my birthday or christmas one of the two i went for east like the usual easter bright colors and this is all double knit weight as well i should add um and I selected a load of them, so then there's white, there's um, coral, like a salmon and a coral, there's various different greens from olive to a um, more plant green, there's a bright orange here, um, the purple I didn't use, that's just another end. There's Tiffany green, duck egg blue, um, baby yellow, which I barely used, I am going to say I barely used that, but there is a little bit in there, um, baby pink, gotta get that pink though, this is a Rowan double knit bright pink that I've been, well, yeah. It's not exactly pink, it's more ba, 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 in between aubergine and pink. It's got more purple in it than, it than it is pink, but anyway. I have wanted to use this for the longest time and so I delved into it to add into this pattern. Um, we've got glitter. Can you see the glitter? Ooh. I'm a bit hesitant to show you the stuff out of this bag because Darcy's been near it and I keep spotting Darcy has. So yeah, everything's covered in hair. That's another glitter pink. Oh wow. That glitter's popping. Mm. Um then there's another couple of greens in there. They are all different. Um just to really bring that Easter Easter colour palette through. We've got like a, a brighter Barbie pink there. Ooh, can she balance them? Ta-da! Um, and I edged it and joined it in this pink. Let me drop my yarn bag. Here. And this is Double Knit Style Craft. I brought this for a scarf that I had in mind. And I actually used part of it on the, whoa, on the um, giant granny square 
um, cowl that I made from Emma of Potter and Bloom and this was the leftover so there was just under 200 grams um, and I joined I come on Heather words the fourth round on every square was in this pink and then the um, joins if I had to seam were mainly in this pink I also included as an accent some of this which is just some stash cream that I had um, the colourway is cream they were, it's 25 gram balls and it's called Teddy Springtime mini double knitting and I had I don't know four well no more like seven or eight of them put aside and I've just used this as an accent excuse me as I'll show you that isn't included in any of the squares all of the squares that I made are four rounds so there's three rounds made out of scraps um, I've weighed these squares they weigh six grams the outer edge is two grams so the inners of all of the squares were scraps I picked a very specific Easter themed colour palette as you can see here that white is very glaringly bright and I wanted it to be Easter themed um, and when I put name inspiration next to it I had Easter, Spring, Tulips, Rhythm, Bonnet, Reflection they're all words that were really coming to me for this for the inspiration and as I was working on it um, so I finished the Rito Yarn Jumper and I started this the same day um, I love granny squares and incidentally when I started this jumper I was at home recovering from tonsillitis which um, it only lasted about three days which is really I'm fine with that before I've had it I've had tonsillitis and it's put me in like hospital and it's lasted weeks and weeks so three days I was back on my feet um, so I was at home recovering from tonsillitis and a chest infection and I didn't really want anything that I really needed to concentrate on um, and I've said this before when I was working on Enamid granny squares are so healing I absolutely love making them and I just want to be surrounded by them so I made this out of it it's living in this bag which Josie Rose made for me she's on Facebook um, then she kindly gave me three of these bags this is the biggest one I'm just putting it next to my face so you can see how big it's bigger than my face um, and it's got this amazing newsprint and it's all Harry Potter stuff on there and anybody that's been here for a while knows I'm a crazy crazy Harry Potter fan the date of recording this next weekend I am due to go to Harry Potter world but you will have seen this after I've been there but I cannot wait so Harry Potter bag are you ready for this are you ready for this because it's pretty much almost done ah uh. Here we go, tribe. Ah! <laughs> it looks amazing. Oh my goodness, it looks amazing. Right, let me move the pile of yarn that has now just got wrapped around my foot. Put it all out of the way. I, in selecting these yarns, I opened up my tubs, which are my stashery in the clear tubs that sometimes you see stacked there. I, I didn't move them today and I created a pile of them I'd been on Pinterest and I'd gone I'd found a colour palette for um, Easter I feel like it's gone really dark in here because now it's raining I don't think that made any difference I got my big lights on though I think I look bright enough Stop playing with the light, stop playing with your hair. I um, opened the tubs up and I laid out the colours that I felt worked well together and I went on Pinterest and I found a colour palette of Easter colours and I just stayed true to that. 
um, only I really enhanced the pinkness. I love it. Who loves it? Oh, I'm so proud of this. Okay. The reason I'm not wearing it is because I'm going to rip it down. But I will, I will change and put it on to show you before I do so. I really, really love this design and it came together so, so quickly. Um, it has that drop back that I was speaking about and going to add ribbons here. What isn't in the design that I doodled is the mesh joining the sleeves. But as I was working on this, I started off with the granny squares at the bottom down here in a panel um, and that was one, two, three, four, maybe four, no, definitely four squares wide. I say that. Yeah, four squares wide and I started at the bottom, went along like so, joined as I go. Um, and then I did a square for the shoulders, which I here folded over. I did the triangles for the neckline. Um, and then I went on and did the back. And I did actually start at the bottom and then I worked my way up and then I joined on to here so that it was seam like seamless um, because I did the join as you go method. I then added in the neck line, which I made up myself. I used that same detailing here and then I added in sleeves. The sleeves are made of, um, for my sizing, three squares, which I've done join as you go in a tube, and then I've sewn on to this. Yes, loving it. Loving the colours as well. I hope you're getting a good representation there. Now, isn't it cool that this bought this? I recorded quite a bit of footage as I was making this. I had a light set up and all I did was when I needed to show you something, I turned it on, turned my phone on and I recorded. So I've got some time lapse footage of me starting the design. I have got um, time lapse footage of me frogging so much of the design. I think I frogged this in part three to four times which is crazy. I started it not last Thursday, the Thursday before. So today is now Saturday. Um, granny squares don't take me two minutes to do. So doing the granny squares as I went along was fine. Um, originally I was going to carry on and just and do a panel of granny squares for the sleeve. No, no. Originally I wanted solid sleeves, they weren't going to be granny squares and then I realised I wasn't going to have enough of this pink and rather than buy more I just wanted to use what I have because if I go and buy more I don't know, I don't know whether I speak for the masses but when I buy more yarn I see, say I need two balls of this, I'll think well Two balls is £4 maybe, but it says if I spend £25 I won't have to spend postage. So then I'll spend £25 rather than just buy the two balls at £4 and the £5 postage. I'll go and spend £25 on yarn and I just don't need it. My yarn tower is bursting at the seams. I've got so many amazing yarns waiting to work on. And for Lent I have given up spending money specifically buying no more craft stuff no more yarn no more materials for anything i am using what i've got but i have also expanded that into a no spend so other than the basics that i have that i need sorry such as food petrol i am not buying anything no 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 clothes don't need any right now no more books no more magazines patterns else do I buy a lot of just no more um, and no more of the drip 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 of money you know on your lunch break going and buying a couple of packets of biscuits a couple of packets of this a couple of packets of that lunching out and before you know it you spent like eight quid in one month no 
that's done. So because of that, um, because of the, the ban, because of what I've given up for Lent, it's really encouraging me to use what I've got and in a couple of ways that's already come through and in my head I would, I would be thinking, I must go buy this because I need it and then I think, actually what have I got that I can use? Anyway, stop digressing. Just so you know, I'm full force simplifying everything and I'm enjoying trying, well, I'm enjoying not spending money and just using what I've got. My yarn tower is amazing. I did a flash my stash not long ago, but I could definitely do an update on that because I've got at least another one and a half tubs of yarn since then. Um, so because I didn't have enough for the full sleeves, I decided that I was going to do the granny squares because I weighed this. I know the outer edge only uses two grams. I knew how many squares I needed to do my sleeves and that I'd have more than enough. As opposed to this entire thing needing to be done in the round, you know, like a granny stripe in the pink, which I wouldn't have had enough of. Um, so then I tried to do the granny squares just to continue from here down. It didn't work for a number of reasons. One, because when I, I added on like four granny squares to go over this curve, but then it was too bulky under here. Um, and originally I did do it with four squares. I sewed it up, but then I couldn't get it to neatly join to the side of the jumper. And so I had this like tufty bit, which then was just under my armpit. It wasn't uncomfortable, but it was definitely unsightly. So. I rip that back. Then I added on the neck detailing. I knew that I wanted more of a curved um, hemline, but it was quite angular before I put this on. So I was umming and ahhing as to what to do. Again, the pink is slightly limited, so I decided to go in with, originally I did it in white, and it looked too harsh um, and so I ripped that out and did it in cream and I think the cream just sets it off really nicely and it also works with my Easter theme the Easter colour palette um, so I did that and I did then I decided to add it onto here just to enhance this and just to make the whole design a bit more consistent um, and so I will then show you that I had to frog this because I decided that I wanted it to look much more symmetrical here and so I did two rows of single crochet here my mess stitch a row of single crochet and I um, single crocheted to join did all of that and then I frogged it again and I can't even remember why, but I'm so glad that I put that I recorded all this footage to show you because I've got a lot to show you here. It's an almost completely finished jumper, but so much work went into it. Um, not particularly time consuming, it just I would get a couple of stages forward and then I would think, no, I need to take that back so I can do it in this way. Um, one thing I'm quite proud of is I sewed the majority of the ends in as I went along. Um, I definitely found that so as to appreciate the design, I needed the ends to be sewn in because I felt like you couldn't, you just couldn't really see through all of those yarn ends a hundred times over, which is why I've got an entire tub of them. I do have plans for them though, so that's fine. Um, then, after all the frogging, and all the time lapsing, and all the reflecting, 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 whilst making this design, I decided that I need to dismantle the entire design. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So I decided that it's too long on me and that I want a. shorter hemline and so this entire bottom row needs to come off and because of the way I made it because I started bottom up I'm going to have to take apart the entire thing pick out the squares 
that I've already sewn the ends in on so that I can remove that entire band. I did think about just simply tucking it up and sewing it in because you probably wouldn't notice but it will sit thicker and I've come this far so I want to do it right my only other thinking was that I could maybe do it as part of, des of the design that it could be folded up and that I do like ribbon ties on the side to keep it in place and then I could wear it as a longer jumper if I wanted to I've not discounted that idea so that's something I could play with but I as I said like to wear my jumpers cropped this jumper I'm wearing now is cropped so it comes to my my belly buttons here that's my jeans I've tucked my t-shirt in to keep it out of the way and this sits they're high-waisted jeans and my jumper sits you know just overlapping the the button band and that's where I want this one to sit whereas when I wear it I promise you it is much lower I will show it on to try you I will try it on to show you so what do you think can you see yourself wearing it I've picked out some ribbon out of my stash in white I'm not I'm not 100% keen on it but I can't really I think I just see like a a pink that's very similar to this as the ribbon colour but then maybe it will do it good to have something contrasting to really show that it's a mixed media project um, in, in any event I'm on a no spend so it needs to be something that I've got or something that I can trade for um, I might go and see if my mum has got a ribbon stash that I can she definitely has a stash that I could read and might have something in it um, but yes I'm really really pleased with it I absolutely adore the colours I want to wear this on Easter Sunday to church so that is my deadline to get it finished I've got a month um, until this is finished I won't be starting another crochet project so I hope it doesn't take me a month because in that time I could get a lot done um, and I think as many things in my life the thought of it is worse than just actually doing it and once I've started it won't take me long to take it apart so I think I might sit with a podcast or a vlog and dismantle it um, I watched I Am Not Your Guru by Tony Robbins whilst working on this that really helped with a lot of reflection and he has um, some sort of, they're not songs, but some things on Spotify that I could listen to. There's also the podcast by Girlboss that I'm interested in. There's a couple that one of my friends has sent me that she's been saying you must, must listen or you must, must watch. So taking something apart doesn't take up much of your focus. So I could do that and listen to something and it's a win-win because I'd be super productive. Um, yeah, and as I said, this has been dubbed reflection because of how much reflection I've been doing whilst I've been working on it. Granny Squares are so mind, like, I don't want to say mindless, but they are. They're, they're a project that I can be very mindful with whilst I'm working on them because they keep me occupied and they keep me focused, but then I can sort of just mull through on a lot of things that are going through my mind um, and I did take some pictures and put them up of me using this design working on this whilst reflecting on my vision board from from a couple of years ago which I've got down here this is the huge uh, vision board that I made I'm reflecting the lights in it in 2017 and it has so much on it, so, so much. Um, 
and I just sort of sat there and looked at the plans I had for myself two years ago and what I have accomplished and what maybe I didn't see through, whether it be from lack of courage or distraction and I just spent some time focusing and recentering, and I feel so much better for it. That is the biggest vision board I've ever made, just saying. They, they used to be an A4 page in my journal, um, and then I moved into my own place for the first time ever, and I had the, all the space to myself, so I decided I was going to make a big vision board that I could display and that's two A3 pieces of paper put together um, and then the frame is from Ikea and then the year after it was an A4 page but I framed it and then this year it is just one little quote like this so they've gotten a lot smaller but I feel like not only was that a vision board for 2017 but also it just encapsulated a lot of who I am and what I want to be and what I'm working towards and so that lives on top of my mirror in my bedroom and um, so I can see it every day so I took that down and I had that at the foot of my bed whilst I was working on this um, one of the other names that I'm toying with is Rism because I want to wear it on Easter Sunday um, and I did want it to have some sort of Easter connotation to it because this is like Barbie goes to Easter lunch um, one of the other comments was a pink paintball party um, and I also was watching Vanellope von Sweets from Wreck-It Ralph I watched, I watched um, Wreck-It Ralph too, Ralph Breaks the Internet and it does remind me of the Candyland game that she originally comes from so maybe I could do some sort of sweet type thing but look at it I'm, I'm loving it, absolutely loving it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to tell you on this other than I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna show it on. I'm going to try it on so I can show you, so you can see what I'm working with. Okay, moving on. I have some stash enhancements now. I know I've just done a whole. I'm not spending any money and I'm not this and I'm not that. I've given up spending money for Lent, yes, fact. Um, and that is helping me stay on track with Simplify, which is my one word for 2017, of minimi minim 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 <laughs> of minimalism and cutting back and doing more with less and just using the resources I have and what I have when I say that, I am looking at my yarn tower, which is just amazing and it is full of so many possibilities and so many great projects. Um, now before I went on the, yarn, the no spend, I was noticing that my old habits were creeping in a little bit um, and I was picking things up and in my head I was saying it's only £3, it's only £4 but that really adds up and not only that those items come into the house and they take up room and I'm really trying to reduce how much I'm surrounded by um, so a few of the things here I've bought myself and a couple of things have been gifts so I'm going to show you in the orders that I pick them up first thing I got is this vintage book it's called Knitting Vintage and it was from the works. Now it was originally published in Canada um, by Barons and the author is Claire Montgomery. It's got 30 projects inspired by period fashions. I absolutely love that loop um, shawl bolero shrug rather on the front. And it was £3. The first page is this again another design I absolutely adore um, and it is ordered in the different eras, decades so it's got the roaring 20s, the glamorous 30s, the thrifty 40s, the fabulous 50s, the swinging 60s, the groovy 70s and the dramatic 80s 
Um, and then it's got pages like this, which are inspiration mood boards. And I love that because that is what I do in my journals. Now this book was only £3, so I decided to get a copy. Um, and there are a number of designs that I want to work on. One of them being the Knit Bolero. I think that would look really, really cool with some high-waisted jeans and um, like a either a bodysuit or just a slinky little... That just sounds weird, doesn't it? But, uh, I've got a really small knit, um, close-fitting vest that's got like a slight v-neck in a really nice green green what's going on green glitter that was what i meant to say not glean green glitter yarn i think that would look really nice um and then maybe over just like a t-shirt a distressed looking oldish t-shirt my ripped jeans and converse if i did that in a Oh, either a light colour or just a very on point colour like an, a pink or a pink something like that I think that would look really cool or maybe just um, a yarn that has an effect on it that's all like blacks and greys so I picked it up for that reason I also really really like I don't want to show you the wrong page there we go that waistcoat is using four ply and I did think you know all of the little minis that I got from Yarndale how amazing would it look if I used that design but with all the pinks that I've got up there and the background would have to be a grey or Hmm. An oatmeal maybe? That could work. Then I went into I also love they've gov they've governed Heather. I'm not wording very well today. There's they've also given like a little overview overview of the decade. So the thrifty forties, although a time of austerity and rationing People in the 1940s were amazingly inventive and what they, with what they did have. Old garments would be remade into new pieces. Decoration and trim added to worn collars or hems and knitting unraveled to be reused. Function, warmth and comfort were of prime importance because wool was used in the military effort. Wool blends came into more common use. Fashion-wise, the decade was fairly bland with a limited colour palette of Air Force Blue, khaki and olive green and an angular silhouette of sharp shoulders and straight mid calf skirts. The patterns in this chapter for the woolen stockings and a knitted turban, as well as the classic twin set and lace collar show the styles of the 1940s can still appear modern today, especially the strong shapes and wide shoulders. I like the little overview they gave of what was going on in the world at that time. Um, then we go through the areas. There are quite a few different patterns in here that I want to make, but most definitely the loop, bolero, and then the tangerine Aaron cardigan. And I already have the yarn for both of them, so that was great. So that was my three pound um, little treat that I got for myself. I've took the label off but it's left glue on it which is then stuck to all the Darcy fluff in the world. I also picked myself up a copy of Inside Crochet and it's issue 111. My reasoning for this is because Emily of Lost in Knit has a pattern in here and I had to had to have it. It looks great and I can't wait to make it. So it's this one here. It's got bubbles on the sleeves. So this pattern is the bubble cardigan and it's on page 44 so I'm going to quickly go there 
um, and see what I can show you without showing you too much. Yeah, here we go. What am I showing you? I can't see. Uh, look at that. So it's got bubbles all over the yolk and down the sleeves. Um, and yeah, I've got to make one of those. It's using iron, and again, I've got the yarn because it's stuck here. I brought this from. Supermarket, I can't remember which one it is. Audi. Audi's Aaron Grey. And I brought that with um, some money that I actually had made from um, doing cash for clothes, which in the UK you can take bags of your unwanted clothes to like um, a little station and they will weigh it and then they'll give you money for the weight of the clothes. And I did that and I went straight away and bought yarn with it. So not necessarily, um, it wasn't, I didn't feel like guilty about that or that I was spending unnecessarily, but this was pre-ban as well um, because I'd made the money, I'd, I'd cleared out a load of clothes and made room, which was great. And then I went and got more yarn. But again, I've got three balls of that. So I'm, I've got plenty of yarn waiting around to be used. And it says that you need iron weight. Um, let's see, how many do I need? It says that it uses Knit Craft, leader of the pack, 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca, 100 grams shade cream times 8. 800 grams, and I've got 3. 400 gram balls there so I'll have more than enough to make that so I think the grey will look nice as well though I do really like that more lighter cream colour I'm just eyeing up my stash I don't know if I've got 800 grams of the cream I've definitely got 400 grams I've also got 800 grams of burgundy which might work I think the grey will look nice so I've got that um, and then also in here it had a few other designs that I have fallen in love with, hook, line and sinker um, and it also had an interview with Lindsay Harrod, wait or is she the one that wrote it? No it is Lindsay, that is her name. She's, I know her as um, 11 Handmade on Instagram. So whenever I have to then check real names, I'm always a bit unsure. But she made these amazing. She's such a talented designer. And she did the Sensum sweater, which you probably have heard of. Um, just wow. Just wow. So yeah. There's loads of great stuff in there that I'd like to work on. And I went and spent a few days with my grandmother. A week before I was ill actually. And one of the ladies at her knitting group cuts out patterns from magazines. And then takes them in. And she picked this one up for me. It's from the Woman's Weekly. And it's this knitted chunky um, jumper. If you look very closely at the design, it's got ribbon running through it. Can you see? And I saw it and I had to, had to make this jumper. Um, because I'm really lo loving the mixed media and I'm putting the ribbon in on reflection. And I wanted this jumper so badly and I didn't really have the chunky yarn to use. I've got some chunky yarn from the pound shop, but it's got a weird, like, silky sheen finish to it, which I think means I'm going to end up making some sort of home decoration out of it as opposed to a wearable item. So, we went yarn shopping, and I didn't need this yarn, and I haven't 
got very far with the design, which is one of my reasons for being for my my no spend ban because wait hold up you've got all this to work on you don't need to go get more but I will make this jumper it's amazing I'm using this yarn here it is a tweedy yarn and I absolutely love it I hope you can see it well enough it is of course pink but it's got these flecks of like oatmeal and a very dark brown in it and I got it from Yorkshire Traders and it is Woolcraft Shetland Tweed Chunky. That's the armband. I love how the armband's got gold on it. Um, and I had to get 11 of these. I've got over a kilo of this yarn. And it is 77% acrylic, 20% wool and 3% viscose. Um, which I think is... No, I don't think it has a metallic strand to it, but it is soft, it is fluffy, and it is going to look really, really nice on my skin colour. Um, this is my swatch. Now, it calls for six and a half mil needles. I got gauge with five and a half mil needles, so I guess I'm a tight knitter or a loose knitter. I'm a loose knitter, right? Um, this is my tiny little swatch. I only made a small swatch because it calls for um, 1100 grams of yarn and I bought 1100 grams of yarn, so it might be a bit short. Um, it depends on the yardage, I guess. If it gives yardage. Yeah, I don't think it does. I absolutely adore the yarn. As soon as I saw it, I knew that this was the one. And I shoved it all in my bag and I went and paid and that was that. They do have this in a few other shades. I've got a lilac and an orange, which I can see me getting at a later date if I find the right pattern. Or maybe I have got a design in mind that I would like to make myself for next winter. I'm loving tweed, I'm loving tweedy yarns. Um, if you see my last vlog, I vlogged about Chanel and the tweed in that, um, the tweed suits and how I'm obsessed and this yarn carries on that obsession. I did cast it on and I did get quite a chunk done. Um, and I was at my grandmother's and she was, yap, 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 yap. And we was having a good old chat about this, that and everything. And this pattern I really need to concentrate on. And I frogged a line about five, ten times. And in the end she said, I'll sit with you and help you. And I just said, Nanny, I just need you to be quiet so I can concentrate. So I ripped it all down. Um, and I've done the cast on and that is it. Um, so I'm going to make a little bit of time as and when just to add a few rows. It is going to take me a while. I do not cro I do not knit at the speed I crochet, but it just looks amazing. It feels amazing. It's going to look so good. I've got 11 balls of it, but I don't need to show you all of that. I've shown you the good stuff. Now, I can see that I'm at 50 minutes, and that's just with chatting, and I've got some time lapse and what not to put in so this is going to be a long long episode now as I haven't really vlogged in so long that's to be expected um I just want to say thank you so so much for joining in thank you so so much for being here I have missed doing this regularly I know I said I was going to do it every fortnight and I didn't and I'm still working on my schedule but just know that I love doing this I love being here I love talking to you all um I have set up a Facebook group. It's a closed group for all the tribe members. It is HD Designs Crochet on Facebook. So please come along and request to join so I can add you. Um, I want to be able to have posts where people can show what they're working on. I want to be able to give you updates on what I'm working on. I do have a Facebook page, but I just feel like the group will give that community spirit that we need. So please go along and join there. You can also find me on Patreon where you'll get updates ahead of everybody else. You will 
Um, also find me on Instagram. And I am going to leave that there. I will show you the couple of other brand new things I've got another day. Um, and I hope you have a blessed week and you have lots of happy making moments and memories. See you later, tribe!